address the overwhelming number of unlicensed street vendors on the sidewalk throughout downtown Flushing. It's one of the busiest commercial corridors in the five boroughs and home to the third busiest intersection of the city. And let me be clear, our goal is not to prevent people from making a living or providing for their families. However, in the absence of enforcement, the current situation in downtown Flushing has become untenable. The lack of enforcement has created a vacuum that only attracts more unlicensed vendors to Flushing from across the city, but also creates a sense of lawlessness that attracts criminal elements, such as counterfeit goods, individuals selling live seafood, and illegal weed sellers. Since I took office over a year ago, the Department of Consumer and Workers Protection, the NYPD, and the local 109 police group have been working together with the office to address the proliferation of street vendors. The ECWP has engaged in educational outreach for more than a year since former Mayor de Blasio moved street vending enforcement from NYTPD to DCWP. However, it is clear the current approach of trying to educate vendors to follow the law is not working and in fact the situation is getting worse. Understanding the extreme congestion and the special circumstances in downtown Flushing, the City Council did our job and passed Local Law 181 to ensure that sidewalks of Flushing remain clear and safe for pedestrians. And so it's time for the city to get serious about the problem and enforce the law. We are not saying what's best for Flushing is the best for New York City. And maybe there are neighborhoods where sidewalks are clear of congestion and will be able to handle the addition of vendors. But this does not work in downtown Flushing. It doesn't work for tens of thousands of people passing through our community every day who make the intersection of Main Street and Roosevelt Avenue the third busiest intersection in the city, or make Flushing the busiest bus and transfer spot in its entire mass transit system. It's become a nearly impossible people mobility issues to navigate in downtown Flushing. My office has heard from disabled relatives and elderly parents who need to shop at a supermarket who say it's nearly impossible, even dangerous for them to move around Flushing. My office has heard from street hangers, people who take the bus, who can't even wait at the designated bus stops because their vendors occupy the space. And my office heard from residents who's now avoid shopping or eating out in downtown Flushing because we become too difficult to cross the street. Beyond the congestion of license that many of these vendors are selling illegal goods and are failing to pay taxes like the brick and mortar businesses. But not permits or licenses, many of the vendors are leaving behind their garbage. They leave behind houses, cardboard boxes, and empty containers on the street corners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our community is demanding action and change this, and vendors remain one of my top complaints that my office receives. So I encourage anyone who's frustrated with us like us to sign this petition and show to the city that people who live, work, and visit here support the enforcement of the no vending zone and want our sidewalks again to return back to the pedestrian they attended for. We are once again saying enough is enough. And it's time for the city to once enforce the no vending zone in Flushing. We claim the sidewalks for our residents, commuters, and people from across the Shoy Train area who come here for a unique retail store, supermarket, and restaurant. And now I'd like to invite some residents and members of the business community to share their experiences. So first I'd like to invite Dion Yu, Executive Director of the BID. So I just want to say this, the pandemic is over and the city and the city agency cannot have two double standard of the laws. One set for the business owners and one set of laws for legal vendors right off the bat. We are seeing that we have uh, more sit-down population who are 50% occupied by the city yet. The city will still charge them full property tax. And for those property owners, for those shop owners of the high rents, they still have to leave the city. And we just don't think that's fair. And uh, I totally agree with the uh, work. Council members at Central and I mean, we'll stated, we have to gain uh, the sidewalk back. The sidewalk is for all New Yorkers. 
It's not for one set of people. We want the sidewalk, so we have um, more space for people to walk. And cannot forget, we are a transit hub with 100,000 people walking on our, on our on Main Street. So we have got to get the street cleaned up and have the city agency enforce the law and return the sidewalk to New Yorkers. Thank you. Thank you, Dion. And I am now Dio Rosales, the business owner here. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Dio Rosales. Hey, Thank you. Well, I want to express my appreciation for this group and for their efforts, and I agree, enough of this, enough. Uh, my office is uh, right corner of Main Street and 39 Avenue. I'm an attorney, and my practice is personal injuries. So a lot of my clients have difficulty walking, and it's hard enough already. And it's just extra worse to have uh, sidewalks narrowed, and it's just very difficult for my clients. So um, this is a great effort. And again, thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, I'd like to invite Bill and Ira. Ira, sorry, Ira Denberg. <laughs> My name's Ira Denberg, I'm a business owner. Um, I'm also in the same building we're on 3901 Main Street. And it's it's a really busy street. There's a lot of foot traffic over there. We're right off Roosevelt where the people get off the buses to go to the trains. Uh, my business, we work with a lot of elderly people and they're very intimidated navigating the streets now. People come on ambulance, accessory, they get dropped off by family members. The sidewalks are blocked. They're half the size that they should be because people are blocking it. And we're losing a lot of business because people just don't want to come to downtown Flushing anymore. And it's really, I'm sure it's hurting a lot of businesses and something really needs to be done. Thank you. And now we have Dee Farm Ritter from the Union Street Business Association. Hi, uh, the problem is that you know, all the businesses take classes. And we are rich. And you know, we work you know, 9 to 8, 10 hours, 11 hours a day to, to make a living. But sometimes it's just not helping when they sell the same items outside in the store, our street. And another thing is that because it makes too much congestion on Main Street, a lot of this, like customers doesn't want to come here anymore. And it's kind of dangerous too. And one thing I'm really frustrated, I mean, we have kind of this, is that they say they put their merchandise in the middle of the road, not even like side of the If you see, they put it like middle of the road, and you know, people cannot cross. I mean, it's a, it's a disaster. We need to stop this. And you know, I hope everybody can help us out. On behalf of the U.S. Association, uh, we like to have the survey and the end of this Thank you. Now I'd like to invite some seniors from the community to come out and share their experience. <laughs> 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 I can I can get you the I can get you how many complaints you have. I'll, I'll send this to everybody when I get back. And you can send also. I off the top. Of I, know, I, can, uh, 
I mean, they're supposed to be they're supposed to be out here every week. But that's not me, they are. Okay, I'll say that. That's because they're supposed to be out here. That's not me, they are. Any other questions? So how long does it take for gravity the petition signatures? They at least gonna do it for a couple of weeks because I do. I really want a comprehensive. Uh, I want the message to get out, and I do want to hear some feedback. So what is the goal? Like how many petitions? I mean, <laughs> the goal is it's about it's, it's not about the goal how many collect, it's about the goal of how many people want to come yeah, want to sign it. <laughs> You mentioned earlier that the goal is not to be, but there's other things. So, I, I'm going to say, I one, I'm speaking again from downtown Flushing, this particular area. If other districts, you know, feel like that they are able to have the vendors up there, that's fine. Again, I'm not speaking for the non New York City, nor am I speaking to the landscape for the entire New York City. I'm speaking Pacific over the area we're speaking now, which is downtown Flushing. Back to it's the busiest transit hub in all of New York City. But what about specifically Flushing? No, right now I'm happy to support the vendors with Tripoli. I haven't talked to them in the past to so think about one job force development program. <laughs> Oh, but no, I'll tell you, you have to use the tools as well. Um, it's Northern, College Point, Sanford, and Union. I have to be clear, not all vending members have to be the law. So that is right now currently the law it's for all the it's a no vending it's not for so when it says no vending clearly it means no vending for even so I, I think I explained that right now when the Blasio uh, became the mayor, the no vending was before that was under NYPD and they they switched that to DCWP um, to hand out the box. I mean our office has been working with DCWP to educate the vendors before buying. This is something we have done since we um, yeah. I'll only speak to when I can buy. This is something that we have been doing since I took office. Right, so that's why we're having the conference today because we've been working, I would say since I took office, to do that. Uh, because, you know, we, uh, our goal is not to punish, but since it's not working, that's why we're, set, we're asking uh, everyone to sign a petition so we can get true enforcement down to well, back to <laughs> this is why I'm having the petition because you're right, it doesn't work. It, do, it has not worked. It really just hasn't worked, right? This, this situation has been happening since, again, I'll just speak to when I took office. I won't speak to prior to that. And we've been trying many different ways, but it has not been working. <laughs> DCWP would come down here and enforce. They do issue fines. I believe it's twenty five dollars. Um, but uh, they also, you know, some issues with that is that you know they don't. Sometimes when you're selling these um, goods. There's, a, there's no need to give a, a, a ID. There's no need to know who you are. You could, you know, actually, there's no need to even pay the fine, right? Because there's no true enforcement on those fines. And so, NYPD, how does that compare to NYPD? Sure, I think with NYPD, when they come down here, there is a more of a, I guess, enforcement process where people do show their, they definitely do show their, uh, their ID. And you know who you are, you know who you're giving fun to. Right now, I'm not sure. 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 I'm not s
one other part of NYDD is the building, NYDD does the building. You mentioned the public safety earlier. What are the actual dangers to people and citizens in the area that these, these uh, vendors represent? Now, I'll just give you that. When these vendors are being sold, they are not being sold for profit. They are higher. That's, I mean, when it's a very crowded area, and you especially there's a lot of seniors that must walk down there, the chances of being pickpocketed, it, it, it does is higher. I do actually have NYPD down here, someone's giving out tips to everyone walking down here to be careful about your pocketbook. Be careful about, you know, how, you, you know, how you're carrying your, your, your possessions. And also, I would say, counterfeit goods, selling counterfeit goods by itself, is illegal. And also selling of live food, seafood, meat, not itself is against the rules. Because there's no safety standard that someone could be buying that. They could be getting sick. Any other questions? Alright, thank you. Thank you for coming.